Hello viewers, episode 3, defence, let's look at sports, professional sports, uh, in particular uh, something like uh, football games uh, of all various codes, soccer, rugby, that sort of stuff, whatever they play in America, I forget what they call it, but football. Okay, you've got a football field to play on. You've got two opposing teams. Now during the football season, as it progresses, other teams fall by the wayside. You've got two teams. And you've got an umpire on the field. Two teams at the halfway mark. The game's about to start. The umpire... Well, he's the policeman of the game. He knows all the rules. So when the whistle blows, the game starts. Both teams have stopped eyeballing each other off as a passive defence on that halfway line. You know, growling, snarling at each other, probably a few profanities. Uh, New, Zealanders, New Zealanders do the harker dance, that's scary. But usually it starts off with a bit of intimidation. Whistle goes off, game starts. The object of the game is for the opposing team to score a goal the goal being in the other team's territory scoring a number of goals throughout the whole game is a resource why is it a resource? well in these professional games football games it means lucrative contracts, sponsors money another benefit and it spreads out to television rights and all that sort of thing it's all about money and in this instance it's a resource plain and simple so the game kicks off and it becomes a situation of offense defense all the way through defense you got your front line and they're trying to get that ball into that goal down the other end of the field into the other opposing team's territory and in some codes of football they pass the ball backwards and forwards along the flanks sometimes they'll kick it deep into the territory push the defence back of the opposing team push them right back so they can get as close to the goal as they can and then the defence on the opposing team then becomes offensive to push them back over the halfway line and try and defend you know, and get a goal on the opposing end of the field. It's a high stakes game. The umpire is there to make sure that they all play by the rules, depending what code the rules come under and all that sort of thing. You know, dangerous tackles, uh, things like that, um, anything that'll break the, the rules of the game. Um, if a player abuses or touches the umpire or the referee well that's bad news that's really bad news he'll get sent off the field either for the entire game or for a amount of time what happens then is that after the game is finished depending on how serious the offense is that broke the rules of the games that player will go up before a tribunal and They'll decide what penalty he gets. So they're running backwards and forwards down the field. Offense, defense, offense, defense, full time. That's it. You know, offense becomes aggressive to stop the other teams, the other team from scoring a goal in their territory. And that's basically what it is. Are there other threats? Is there a third party threat in this situation? Well, yeah. Spectators. Okay, you've got the spectators in the stadiums. Very passionate. And if they don't agree with an umpire's decision or referee's decision, or their favourite team is losing and you know they're getting really, really angry, pissed off about the team that's winning, um, yeah, it gets out of control. And we've seen this on TV, you know, particularly with soccer matches in Europe. Uh, fanatics. Absolute fanatics. Jeez. Oh, and 
a lot of people have been arrested, people get hurt when they crash down the barriers, the spectator barriers and so on like that and that sort of thing and it often spills out into the streets. So that's that's poss you know, possibly another a, a, um, a threat to um, your, your situation, um, defence, offence, that sort of thing. So you've got to look at a number of threats. Now whether out in the boonies it's, it, it's, it's a human threat or it could be wildlife threat these are the things you've got to look at what are your resources to provide defense for your patch of turf either an urban area or out in the boondocks do the boundaries include several houses in the area you might be a part of a uh, neighborhood watch program where your neighbors have had a meeting cool together and they watch each other's houses when people are away or watch strange people come up, vehicles come up or someone knocking on your door and they let you know and if it looks really really suspicious they call the cops. In the sports game offence and defence is going on all the time. That's the way it is, it rages backwards and forwards across the field, across boundaries. And usually the last two at the top of the, of the, the season that are playing off against each other and this happens through all through the season, I guess, with other teams too, is things like uh, strategy. Okay, they'll sit down during their training sessions and they'll watch the previous game. They'll watch how they performed on the field and the coach will be there telling them, well, you should have done this, you should have done that, look at how they did this and how they did that, look at their strategy, and they work out a strategy to counteract the opposing team's strategy. It's common sense. The captain of the team, he's the one at the coal face. Uh, he's the one that's got to work out where to place his best defence and where to place his best offence. And on the sports field, you also have layered defence right back to the goals, which on occasions, if the opposing team breaks through your first line of defence, that in-depth of defence become has to become offensive as the players fall back, regroup and try a different tactic to push the other team back across the line, across the boundary. If you look at another game called tennis, and squash is another good game to uh, look at in a similar way. Tennis, you've got two players on the court. You've got the net and each player has their own boundary, their own turf. The idea being is when they start playing is to hit that ball, that tennis ball into the other person's boundary, working on a strategy to disadvantage them to the point where the opposing tennis player cannot hit that ball. And as you watch the match go on, the strategy is, is yes, hit the ball to the disadvantage of the other player but you can also make the other player the other team even in football fatigued to the point where it's much easier to dominate and win the game if you watch it on TV tennis players also look at previous games of their opponents find out where their weak defense is where the weak offence is. That's why they place the ball on certain parts of the court where the player might not have a good backhand. It's all about strategy. That's strategy is, is something to keep in mind for later videos. In the next video I'll relate to nature, nature's predators. Either they hunt in packs or they hunt alone strategies they use. Not a whole lot different in principle to what humans do. That'll be the next episode. Thanks very much for watching.